Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome to the Salam Show. I'm your host, Sultan Khatib. And today we're going to be starting the show with a little bit different segment. So normally I do the interview segment from 11 to 12 p.m. But today we're going to slightly change that and start with the interview. And then, of course, with the usual news segment. And today my guest... Well, what can I say? He's, mashallah, one of the most famous persons here in Nottingham. He's had a whole career in the public life. And what more, what more can I say? Unless, he, of course, he will then introduce himself. So please welcome Brother Javed Khalek. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. So, Brother Javed, you know, of course, everyone, know, everyone knows who you are, mashallah. You know, you've been in the public life of boxing, you've won many world titles. I mean, there's so much to talk about you, isn't there? I've uh, done pretty well, yeah. Um, I've had a nice uh, long career and, uh, and I'm still involved in what I, what I do and, uh, and I'm really loving it and enjoying it. Mashallah, that's really good. And of course, we're going to talk about what you're doing now in the later program. But of course, <clears throat> let's go back to your childhood when, when you were just a young brother, Jawad Khalik. <laughs> and uh, so, I mean, of course, boxing is not something that everyone thinks of that when they you know want to, want to grow up and that's not and normally they say I want to be a scientist I want to be an astronaut I want to be this and this and this and very few people uh, or children shall say will say oh, I want to become a boxer because they want to think of the, on, <clears throat> when they look at TV and they see people punching <laughs> being punched in the face it's not really oh yeah I want, to, I want to get punched in the face or something so I suppose when did this whole kind of idea that oh yes I want to become a boxer <coughs> um, when you were in, during your childhood yeah, and I never really thought about becoming a boxer myself. Um, it just kind of happened. I was always a very keen sports person, um, always active, running around the streets and playing all silly games and everything, and uh, always very competitive, want to win at everything. And uh, we had a, we were in a bit of a rough area in the meadows. It was a lot of gangs, a lot of crime and stuff going on in there. And a gym opened in that area at the Portland Lake Centre. Oh, yes, I remember that, yeah. Um, and me and a few friends went down, Check it out. I just fell in love with it as soon as, um, as, soon as I started, more or less. Um, I was pretty good early on, and uh, all my friends slowly drifted away. It was very hard, hard work. I still cut it, started getting better. Within a few months, I boxed, and, uh, and I won my first bout, um, first fight in the first round, and it gave me such a buzz, buzz and achievement, and that's where I started really dreaming of becoming a champion and uh, you know, wanting to do it as a, as a profession. And so, so you won your first fight. What age did, did you win your first fight? Then I was seventeen. So at that time, it was a uh, it was a senior bout. So you you you're fighting men basically. And uh, oh, wow, mashallah. Um, now it's changed to eighteen, but it's not much different. Um, yeah, and 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 I think I think it just gave me that little um, buzz and excitement, and uh, you know, a sense of achievement of some kind, and. Uh, uh, and I just fell in love with it. And so, and, and let's just talk about your first fight because, of course, we are, I know many people who are sixteen, they're fifteen, they're practicing boxing, and at some point they're going to have their first fight. So, just explain to us what did you do to prepare for it? How did it feel when you were fighting? And of course, how did it feel after that? You know, uh, what I, was it like? I think things have changed a lot since uh, when 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 I started. There's a lot on uh, social media, a lot on the internet now, and a lot of people look at that and think it's easy. They, they 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 look at the champions and read stuff about them, how they train, how they do things, and it's different training as a champion, different training as a top pro, to as a, to to an amateur. You know, you need to do your runs a couple of times, two three times a week. It's only ten fifteen minute runs. Um, you need to be in the gym two three times again at least, working the bugs. It's only a three round fight as an amateur, and uh, that's what you want to prepare for. Too many of them look at the internet, and I, and I, and a lot of the young lads that come to my gym. Tell me, oh, we've been running 30 minutes, 40 minutes, we'll be, we're going to do 10 rounds, this round. I goes, no, you're only doing three round fights, you know. We need to be prepared like, like a professional, like me, whether like them, uh, Antina Joshua and the, re- and, the, and the rest of them, Amir Khans. Um, but it's a little bit different. So when I used to train, I used to, we, the gym used to be open twice a week, Tuesday and Thursday, and uh, we'd just have a two hour session. Um, you don't train full out for two hours, but you know, you train pretty close to that much. You do three, four rounds on the bag, three rounds of shadow boxing, pads, circuit training, and uh, and that's more than enough. And it's, yeah, and the circuits. And, and so was was a really really intense training. Were you? Because obviously, when you go to the gym, you know afterwards you you must have become sore and you feel it the next day, hundred percent. So um, was that kind of like a normal thing to you of training really intense, and then the next day you're pretty much dead out because every single muscle in your body is aching. Yeah, I think um, 
uh, everybody will feel that you know when you when you go and train at that intensely um, you're going to be hurting it, every every part of your muscle hurts your body hurts you know muscles that you've not even used before um but as you do it more regularly and consistently you get used to it and it's not as painful um and it's something you've got to kind of enjoy if you want to it's a bit mad but that's uh, the life you got to if you want to live you know yeah i know because <laughs> obviously i think one of my friend boxes the Obviously, he's just bo- he does boxing, and he put on his TikTok a quote that says, "The pain you the pain you feel today will be the strength tomorrow." So I think the, what that shows is that um, whatever you whatever pain you feel right now, whatever downsides you go to tomorrow, it will all be worth it at the end because that will then build your character and build your strength and build your motivation to do more and become better. Really, to yeah, be yeah, definitely. We've got that quote in our gym as well, <laughs> and, and it's something that people read and and it, you know gives them that little push and that little oomph and uh, motivates them a bit more. And it's true, you know, the more harder you train, uh, and like say the pain you feel today, you won't feel tomorrow. You'll feel the the strength tomorrow in a sense, and you'll feel the benefit of it. So yeah, that's what we always tell them as well. And uh, I think a lot of the kids or the people that do box, they they feel that and uh, and they see the benefit as they keep doing it more regularly, and things get easier. Um, so yeah, that's true. Yeah, and uh, so I just want to move on to you. So you had your first fight <clears throat> at seventeen. From se- from the age of seventeen to your next fight, what did you do? Uh, how did you feel? And w- did that change your kind of perception on boxing and how boxing was? And how did you, and did you ever get a taste of what it would be like to be a professional boxer just from your first fight? Well, after after the first, well, well, back then you had to go to shows. There wasn't no social media. There wasn't these mobile phones and the rest of it. So you have to go to the shows, not knowing if you're going to be boxing anybody. Sometimes you'd get a phone call and you'd go there and there'd be somebody close to your weight, close to your experience, and then you get matched. Other times we'd just go there, not knowing if we're going to be boxing. If there was somebody there that was your weight and roughly your uh, experience level, you know, they'd say, "All right, you're boxing." So there's days when I when I just get changed. Weighed in and everything get changed and think oh, I'm not fighting. Then all of a sudden somebody else turns up and you fight. So you have to be mentally very strong. Um, one minute you don't know if you're fighting, the next minute you're fighting. And uh, as yeah, as, as as I got more experienced, uh, I got better in tune with that and I understood how it all worked. Um, <clears throat> it's not like what people think where you're going to get four to six weeks notice for a fight. You can have all that time to prepare. No, you have to. As an amateur and at the beginning, you have to be prepared all the time. It's like today, well, last night, I got a call for one of my boxers. Somebody's show is um, cancelled, uh, sorry, a bow's cancelled on a show, and they're desperate for a fighter, and I've asked one of my fighters, and he said yes, and he's going to be boxing today. Um, so straight after this interview, I'm going off to Derby to um, to take him down there. So, you know, you just always got to be prepared. Mentally, it makes you stronger. And as you get more experience later on, you can um, take that into the pros. Um, yes, I did. I did sort of, as I got more experience, I, I saw the the attention and the fame that you get with it and uh, and it did make me want to achieve more it made me want to do turn professional um uh, later on I saw Prince Nassim come on the scene so that inspired me a little bit more back then um so yeah it was um all part together so I um, mean uh, so so uh, what age would you, did you do your next fight then because I suppose that kind of shows that you know you had your first fight you had this whole experience about what it's like to be in a proper um, kind of amateur uh, boxing match so your next fight or uh, what age did you uh, do your next fight then it was I think it was 17 again, uh, 17 within, again. A, within a few months uh, we got another fight and so on you know so you just keep keep training and uh, within a few months I got another fight and another fight and then we entered um, some knots and links tournaments which are around the East Midlands or uh, all the top fighters around your weight category uh, they box there <clears throat> I won that and then from there you progress to the next zone uh, or levels of you know East Midlands and then North Zone and London Zone and the rest of it and then I entered the uh, All English uh, Championships the ABAs which is a very prestigious title a lot of the top fighters have all won that and uh, you know the first time I got to the quarterfinals I didn't make the weight quite correctly and um, uh, wasn't you know I, I, on the scales I was a little bit over the weight so I had to go into the next um, weight boxing the light, light middleweight which is a bit heavier it wasn't really my weight um, I lost a close fight on that one but then the year after I prepared properly um, but that was about what that was in 1996 uh, I prepared properly and uh, and I won the the all English championship became uh, ABA champion and so, uh, so you did all these fights at a young age. What kind of advice would you give to all the youngsters who are wanting to be, you know, 
going into amateur level because of course you know at the age of 17 as you said there's no social media no mobile phones you just go there and it, it's literally just God's chance if you'll get um, uh, a fight or not so obviously, obviously, obviously now times change you know you, you maybe get a bit of notice saying okay by the way come at this time you may be able to get um, a boxing match or you know here are the people who are going to be performing <coughs> and boxing so in, in that so we're taking in modern kind of societies boxing uh, era what advice would you give to youngsters and especially those who are 15, 16 who are kind of progressing and training up to this moment when they're 17, 18 yeah, years old? I think, I think you're right. A lot of things have changed. There's a lot more information on how to train, what things to do. You can see things, people training on videos and stuff um, on YouTube. All the top fighters give you, giving you advice. Um, and my advice would be to anybody, whatever you want to achieve or do, you know, put all, all, all your effort into it, work really hard, listen to your coaches, listen to your parents, your families, and get support of everybody because boxing or any kind of sport is very tough and uh, you need that support, you need that guidance and uh, and just keep working hard, be dedicated to whatever you're doing. Mashallah, and that, that's true of what you said there about, you know, keeping, of course, I think nowadays people tend to... Um, because I think now when they read people like, uh, let's say <coughs> boxers biographies and when they read about their life and think oh you know they did this this and this and then they went to that straight away yeah and what I think what they do they kind of match their kind of life to their own and say okay so if I if I don't reach this by this step then I'm no I'm not I'm not going to achieve what uh, let's say Anthony Joshua did because uh, let's say at 22 he achieved his let's say for example his, his world champion title for example and they say okay if I don't achieve by 22 then you know I've got no chance yeah, yeah. and I think that's where people just, you know, become demotivated so I think let's go on to your actual world champion professional life just uh, let's put it out there what was it like being famous for, 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 for <laughs> everyone what was it like being I think, I think having it, all the glamour and everything I think it was never about the fame for me I think it was just all the competition and me wanting to achieve something but the fame comes with it um, uh, I enjoyed it. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's nice to be appreciated. It's nice to be um, recognised and uh, going to these interviews or parties where you where you where you're brought as a guest, and uh, it makes all that hard work worthwhile. And it makes you feel that like you've achieved something. And uh, and then to, and then on top of that, you, you're inspiring the youngsters. You're becoming a role model. So all that is really really nice. Uh, as long as you don't take it in the wrong way and abuse it and and uh, and go on to do wrong things and uh, <clears throat> you know harnish, uh, tarnish your name in a sense and a lot of people who are in the public life they tend to get what we call paparazzi I'm not sure if you're familiar with the figure the term sorry and uh, were you ever paparazzi where you're walking around let's say and the next thing you, know, you see a photographer <laughs> coming up and taking pictures was, was that something that happened to you before? no no unfortunately I wasn't um, that, <laughs> that recognised um, it was starting to get pretty good uh, where people recognised me in different towns and 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 uh, and places, but um, I wasn't as famous as some of them. I wasn't promoted in the right way, and unfortunately, as I was getting to the top, and uh, well, when I got to the top, I didn't get the the publicity like I should have, or promoted like I should have. So, and then at that time, boxing was on a, a bit of a downer. Um, Sky Sports were pulling away from boxing two thousand and two, three, um, or four, and uh, and the money wasn't there to get the big names. So, um, yeah, I, I kind of got pushed pushed to the side a little bit which was a bit sad, you know, I would have loved to fight some of the big champions in America and uh, really got my name out there and tested myself whether win or lose, it would have at least uh, given me that extra bit of um, publicity and limelight and, uh, and and achievement. So, I mean, so let, let's, let's just talk about that, you know, boxing, you, you, you around yourself, boxing is becoming, you know, on the downside, your major um, broadcasting uh, companies are pulling away from the boxing era, and so how did you feel at the time? You know, you you came up, you you worked your way up to this professional level, and next you know all these big broadcast companies decide to pull out. You know, what was going through your mind? What, what were you thinking about boxing in in the, as a future? Yeah, I mean, uh, when I won, I won the world title in two thousand and uh, two thousand and one, uh, and I defended my belt six times, and. Uh, I was, it was going really well, and I was just starting to get recognised in America, in other places. There was talk of fights against all the champions in America, and a few other places, Australia and stuff. So I was really looking forward to that, getting excited about it. And then a couple, a couple of fights got cancelled, and uh, and it's just waiting around. And I was waiting around, and in boxing, if you're not get fighting, you're not getting paid. And uh, you know, at this time, I had a family, I had a couple of kids. Um, so I needed to keep getting paid and keep moving, and, uh, and I was getting older. I was 34, 
So I needed to get the big fights as soon as possible because that was my prime. Uh, and then I waited around for a year or so, missed a couple of fights, lost a couple of fights, and um, um, I decided that it's either I retire now or, or I'll get used in the Mester Bar because they started asking me for combat fights. Um, I wasn't promised anything after the combat fight, so I thought I've got to, I've got to decide, you know, uh, whether I'm going to be messed about, mess my life up, um, get used, or or just retire and start coaching myself. That was always my dream to start coaching and uh, keep involved in boxing or something, and that's what I ended up doing. And I suppose this actually brings beautifully to our next subject about you, what you do now with your uh, martial art, your uh, boxing academy and your fitness academy. So. Was this your, kind of your pinnacle, a turning point in your career in terms of a change of perspective on your boxing career from becoming, from fighting really for other, for, for other people to helping others uh, become world champions? Yeah, the, la- the last year or so while I was still boxing, I started a, a couple of, I started a class, I uh, hired a little place myself. A lot of parents, a lot of friends were asking me, oh, come on, my, teach my kid, he's getting a, out of control and he's messing about or he, want, or he wants to become a boxer, he wants to train, can you do something? And, uh, and I thought, you know, I've got quite a bit of time for you started the class and before I knew it the class had 20 30 kids coming there and I had hardly any equipment it was just a little hall with one or two bags that I brought myself a bit of boxing equipment and we were we were we were training there uh, once a week and then it became twice a week and I thought you know I, it's getting so good without even doing publicity and without any equipment I should look for a place myself and uh, and then once I retired that was you know that was my uh, goal and uh, and it just gives me a sense of uh, uh, fulfillment to pass on my experiences, see the change in some of the kids and uh, and it was just a really nice feeling and I thought, you know, this is the next bit, ne- the next step chapter of my life in a sense uh, and the next thing I'm going to be doing and uh, and it worked out really well. And so uh, your, uh, your classroom essentially, um, are they youngsters? So what's your kind of div- <coughs> diverse in terms of uh, your class? Are they those who are um, youngsters are there those who are, let's say, maybe had a few experience but they weren't really kind of in that kind of uh, mode and, uh, and mm. environment where they have the inv- motivation to do so what was it like in terms uh, of your students I've got students uh, that come from all over some are boxers that um, are trying to get more experience that have heard about me uh, and we've got kids from five upwards that we're, we're, we're coaching as well um, you know the younger you start the better it is I think it, it, it channels that energy gets, it controls your aggression gives you the confidence um, there's so many benefits the discipline that's involved in boxing uh, and then the fit, fitness and the, and, the, and, the, and nowadays it's the the mental health uh, uh, benefits as well, um, how it extra- de-stresses people and everything. So we've got a, a wide range of um, ages, uh, abilities and everything. We, we've got troubled kids that we work with in different areas. We've got, we had a few, few more classes that we're going to be starting up again soon again, but we've just can't stop them for a little while. We've just got too much going on. Uh, we do holiday classes. We do a bit of everything, to be honest. And so, and so uh, you talked about, you know, uh, the impact you have on people's mental health. So it's, what do you say? Boxing is kind of like, because they say exercise is good for your mental health. You should always exercise for your mental health so you become feel better. Is boxing, uh, you could you say boxing is one of uh, those type of exercises that you can do to boost your mental health, to build, boost your confidence and self-esteem? Is that something you would agree with? De- definitely, you know, I've, I've uh, experienced that myself. I think um, whenever you're down or, or or not feeling 100% or there's other problems or other things going on in your life, you know, getting involved in any kind of sport, but boxing especially because you're, you're, you're punching that bag, you're getting rid of the aggression, that intense circuit training and the rest of it really re- releases them, good endorphins, and uh, it's it's a really good relief, a stress reliever, yes. And uh, have you seen, because um, I'm sure you may have had students where they're really down, they're really troubled, and uh, over time, have, uh, what was the improvement like? You, did you see a whole change of personality, a whole change of character? Uh, so uh, what, how, how, um, what was the extent of the impact you had yeah, on we've students? Had, um, we've, we've had a lot of kids that come in um, with, no, with no confidence, no self-esteem. They come in, they can't even look at you, they can't even talk to you. And gradually, as, they, as they've been there for a few months, a few weeks, everyone's different. They slowly start getting involved with everything, start talking, become one of the jokers in a sense. And then we have other people that have got other problems in their lives and, 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 and they're struggling in life and they come. And they said, they've told me so many times, you know, without this, I'd be, 
I'd be in a, in a bad situation, you know. Um, this is helping me to relieve that stress. Um, the mental side of things, the physical side of things, a bit of both. You know, we've got people that are way overweight or the health is not 100%. Uh, we, had, we, have, we have taxi driver classes on a couple of times a week that we, we run, that we've been running for a few years. Um, they, they've got very, very bad lifestyle, you know, late nights, eating wrong. And uh, we've we've helped them in a big big way. Lost weight, helped with the 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 mental side, mental health, and uh, and everything else. So yes, this is benefits in er, er, all areas. I think. And uh, of course, now we we see in the day and age where, you know, we have gang culture everywhere. We have drugs. We have you know abuse everywhere. And uh, so, uh, would you see? Uh, would you say that uh, your uh, um, boxing career, as I suppose, or your boxing? <coughs> um, you're you're kind of you're, you're kind of boxing uh, academy, really. Do you think that is a, I could say like as, as as an alternative to going? So instead of let's say going and joining with a bad crowd, you know, join the boxing, join these academies where you'll be able to uh, prosper and be able to f- fulfill your kind of desires, but in a good way. Yeah, I think um, even when I was boxing, you know, um, we had nothing else to do on the streets. We were out about getting up to no good. And uh, I think boxing stopped us from getting involved in anything silly. Um, you know, it took us, took our mind off other things, kept us away from, from getting in, involved in anything but else. And uh, I've got a lot of kids that come to my gym that have been involved in you know, gangs, in knife crime, in other antisocial behaviour and stuff. And and I've been talking to them and they've slowly opened up to us. And because they don't talk to their parents or any other friends or any other family members, and they get close to us, they feel a, a sense of um, uh, t- togetherness in, in a sense with the gym. They get they get close, they become like family in a sense and friends. And uh, they, and I've got a few kids that have been talking to me and um, they've told me how how they've been pushed into gangs or they can't do anything else, so they've been getting involved in the gangs. They they got they can't talk to the parents, they can't talk to other people. And the gym has helped them get away from that. And, um, and, and, and I know a few friends that have been involved in that crime that I've got involved into the in the gym and they've started coaching with me now as well um and they've, they've we're using them as a role model to others because we're working with a few organizations that we're trying to deter some of the kids from knife crime you know getting involved in the gym getting involved in coaching getting involved in something that'll keep them keep them away from that kind of stuff and it does actually help in a big big way yeah, I know, I'm saying, and you know, I think because obviously now <coughs> you've been recognised as an MBE for doing your hard work. So I think what we'll do because we're now going to go onto a commercial break. But inshallah, we shall continue with this and talk about uh, more about you know your work in the community, and of course we should also debunk a few myths about boxing and all that sense. So we shall see you after the break. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to the Salam Show. I'm your host Sultan Khatib. And we shall now continue with today's show uh, with my, my beautiful guest, Brother Javed Khalik. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. So, I mean, last, uh, before the commercial break, we were talking about your community work and how your academy has changed so many people's lives in so many different ways. And what has that led to you is you receiving an MBA from the Queen herself. Yeah, I was uh, very surprised and shocked. Um, I got a letter about coming to the palace and uh, I'm going to receive um, an MBE for my services to boxing and the community. I've been doing some charity work and helping some of the youngsters. And I thought it was a wind-up. I thought, I thought <laughs> nice, no, we're messing about. So this is just just near the end of when I was retiring because um, I started classes then and I was doing some work back then as well. And then I rang my manager up just to check and, and he said, yeah, he goes, you got the letter. He goes, I've been trying for years. I've not got my MB, you know. And uh, it was an amazing day, you know. I took my family down with me, my mom, dad, and my sister and uh, my wife. And um, we had a great day. I uh, was escorted into the palace. So, and then normally they do it with somebody else. But that day, the queen was there. So I got to meet the queen and she's the one who presented me with the MBE. So I've got pictures and, uh, and a small video um, from that day and uh, yeah I'll cherish that forever and and what was it like you know receiving your uh, MBE uh, what was your what was going through your head when you stepped in the palace like yes you know for everyone wants to come here and here I am you know it's such a restricted place it's such an isolated place in terms of uh, being in, in contact with the public so and you're there yeah, yeah. so what was it like what, I think, what I think, was going that, through I think that's when I started getting a bit a taste of the, the fame and uh, <laughs> um, it just started around about that time I think that was 2004 
um, I don't know, 2004 or five, I, I got escorted into the palace. The gates closed. All the people outside, there was hundreds and hundreds of people outside taking pictures and they couldn't get in. And then we went inside and all the furniture was um, immaculate, you know, all uh, kind of vinyl kind of thing. And um, it was it was just amazing uh, to go in there and, and be treated the way we were treated. And uh, I mean, when you go to the palace, you have these guards. The, I, I, I don't know what you call them. The guards, with, <laughs> the, the guards with the uh, re, I don't I, I don't know what you call them, but the guards with black hats. That's right. Yeah. And uh, you can't speak to them, no matter if you try to make them laugh, if you try to speak to them, they won't. They will never do anything. Did he try that? Did, 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 did he try I, I, to speak I, I, to him? I was tempted, but I think there's a lot of people around, and I didn't want to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they didn't want to look look silly, but yeah, they they were there, they were standing there, and it was just. Um, it was just weird why just they being there, you know. Um, but it made me want more of that limelight, more of that um, attention and stuff. So, yeah, it was good. And, and uh, did, did, did the Queen say anything specific about your work? You know, did she say anything in terms of, like, her favourite kind of uh, impact? You really, should, should I say your, your favourite um, work? She, she just asked us a few questions. I didn't think she was going to say anything, but, she, you know, she asked me when I won the belt and where I won it and how I won it and... Uh, and that's it, you know, because there's a big line of people that are waiting, so she can't say a lot. But I was surprised that she asked and uh, took a bit of an interest. Uh, so that was really nice of her. Well, well that's very really good, mashallah. And I suppose this brings us to the next topic of myths. You know, because when you do, when you will, when you win a world title, or when you go into the boxing and arena, when you're in the public life, you know, people think you know there's glamour, there's uh, so much things associated with fame. What are the myths that people, common really myths, that a lot of people think about boxing that are not really true? I think a lot of people look at the top boxers and they see them with all the, the money, the glamour, the glitz, and they think every sportsman is the same when they've made it today. But no, I think we all do the same thing. We've all got the t- similar titles. You know, I've won a world title, he's won a world title, but it's all about who's promoted in the right way, who's with the right people, who's making money for the promoters by selling all the tickets or exciting on TV. And then it takes a few years to get there. Even the Mayweathers, it took them 10 years, 15 years to actually get the big money. People don't see all the hard work and all the sacrifices that they have to make and all the hard term times that they've had. And I think all, well, everybody needs to understand that. It takes, it took me nearly 10 years to get to the professional titles. Um, I got titles before that, but you don't make much money. And that covers, you know, if you're getting two, three fights a, a year and you're only making so much, it just get, gives you enough to survive for that year in a sense. Um, so, you know, it's not all glamour and glitz. There's a lot of hard work, a lot of sacrifices involved and you have to be prepared for all that to get to the top. And even then there's no guarantee. So it's um, it's really, really a tough life. And, and what are the other myths about, you know, training, about boxing, that people think that, oh yes, you know, this is how boxing is, but in reality isn't. So what are the myths that's, that that's people think? That's another thing. They think, they think oh, we can just have a, do a few, a few sessions and we can become world champions or we can... Um, Win, win big belts and stuff. No, it's a de- it's, it's been dedicated for years, doing the same thing over and over again every day of, of the week. You more or less eat, sleep, train, eat, sleep, train, repeat, eat, sleep, train, repeat, and it becomes it becomes your life. Um, you know, it was my life for fifteen, twenty years, uh, and that's the only way you bec- everything becomes second nature. You do things without thinking about them, and uh, and that's how you become one of the best. And I suppose that kind of re- repetition of eat, sleep, rave, repeat, and. Uh, so I suppose, uh, does that, uh, have you seen people or students really where, you know, they're in this kind of lifestyle, this repetitive lifestyle, and they become uh, demotivated about this kind of thing, or is that all there is to boxing? There's nothing else, there's no more than that, or there's more. There's nothing less than that? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of kids that think, oh my God, this is uh, not what I expected it to be. You know, they think, oh, you train a few months, a few years, and you can become a champion. It, take, it takes five to ten years as an amateur to get somewhere and become good unless you're somebody really lucky really special and gifted like AJ Anthony Joshua or the Prince of Seams you know but even them guys some of them have come up from five, six, seven years old and they've been doing it for 10, 15 years which people don't see again you know any sports you need to at least 10 years of experience to understand everything to make you know to get to get that experience to make the mistakes in training so that it's all perfect on the night and uh, and these are the things people do not understand it's a long process and um, and it's a long um, very tough life 
Yeah, and the same again with uh, Emma Raducanu, the the lady who won the U.S. Open, and they they talk about how she started tennis at the age of five, six years old, and she won her first kind of tournament at mm. the age of nine. So it shows that you know these. Uh, let's be honest, world famous, uh, players and sports players, you know, they started at such a young age and they won and they trained up at such a young age. So I suppose that kind of brings me nicely to what your academy offers in terms of training, in terms of opportunities, in terms of uh, public life, really. What does your, um, academy offer? To yeah, I mean, when I, when I was boxing, the gyms were only open, even most gyms now, they only open twice a week or three times a week or something. We're open five times a week, five days a week. Um, it was six, but I've had to cut it down because I've been doing too much. Um, but we we opened uh, Monday to Thursday, six o'clock to seven o'clock for under fourteens. So it's five years up to fourteen years old, and then um, seven o'clock till half eight Monday and Thursday again uh, for adults, uh, all ages. We don't we don't discriminate um, all genders. And Saturday twelve to one for under fourteens again, and uh, one till half two for adults. Um, we've also got daytime classes Monday and Thursday, twelve thirty to two o'clock. They're more fitness based classes. They were the taxi driver classes, but they're for over forties for anybody now. Everybody's welcome. Um, we offer boxing, fitness training. So if you want to compete in boxing, we're registered with England Boxing. All our coaches are DBS registered. We've got first aided, ch- a child um, protect, a child protecting, and uh, uh, we are insured by the England Boxing. Um, other than that, uh, we do classes outside, holiday classes. We do um, youth cent- you know, di- different different youth centres. We work with different organisations. Like I said earlier, with the knife crime, we've got our organisation, Down Knives Gloves Up, working with Sahara Mental Health as well. Um, so we're working with a lot of different organisations. Uh, we've got our own organisation that we've started as well. So we're going to be working in different areas, troubled areas, doing f- uh, free horror classes for, for troubled kids. Um, and, uh, and 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 yeah, we're, you'll be hearing a, a lot more about us soon. Yeah, one hundred percent. And of course, as I said mentioned it before that. Um, uh, hey, sorry, one sorry. Thing, yeah. one, one other thing, we also put on shows, boxing shows. So anybody that wants to compete, uh, we've just had a boxing show last Sunday um, that went really, really well. That was the first one since lockdown. So anybody who wants to compete, we're registered with England Boxing. You get to compete with us, and uh, and and we've got another one boxing today. So we go all over the country. Uh, taking the kids to compete so um, that gives you the opportunity to uh, progress and uh, and then try to aim to win titles box for England um, enter the Olympics and then from there you can turn professional so there's a lot of opportunities that we're, we're offering and uh, you know it's more or less it's more or less a full-time full-time job for me right now so yeah and uh, uh, before we went on air I said we might get a caller we have a caller on the line oh. so let's take the caller assalamu alaikum Assalamu alaikum. It seems our caller has <laughs> unfortunately not speaking now. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, it seems unfortunately the the caller has unfortunately stopped speaking. <laughs> Maybe they muted themselves. But if you want to ring again, they'd be more ha- more than happy to take a call. But I was talking about you know uh, we have, you mentioned about you know the whole last of eat, sleep, train, repeat. What does your boxing academy kind of offer in terms of training? You know, is there a variety of training? Uh, is there kind of like a structure in terms of, let's say, one day we do this, other day, other day we do that? And how does that kind of lead up to, as you said, about boxing shows? And how do you prepare your students to, in, the, in the best way possible so that they can win titles? Yeah, to start with, we're teaching the basics, the stance, the balance, the punching techniques. Uh, and then as they get better, then you start improving on, you, t- you do the technique work of blocking, slipping, avoiding punches and then uh, light sparring technique sparring and then they go on to sparring um and then if they want to compete they'll get registered um and they get have a medical get registered so everything's in place um and then we we look for sparring in other clubs um we try to get them fights once we think well, they're ready and in the in the gym um we do a bit of everything we do the circuit training for people that just want to lose weight um we do uh, boxing training for for everybody that want that wants to do. If you don't want to, if you don't want to spar, you don't have to spar. There's no pressure on having to fight or spar if you're not sure. I think a lot of people get worried and think, oh, once we go to the boxing gym, we're going to get hit and we're going to get punched up. But um, that's not the case. You know, um, it's all down to the individual. If they want to compete, if they want to box and spar, if they don't want to, they can always do something else uh, while everybody else is sparring. Uh, we try to get everybody working together. So there's always somebody there to help you if you're not as experienced as others. 
Um, so it's not as scary as people think. And in terms of the uh, support that you give for your students, um, what do you uh, offer in terms of, uh, let's, say, let's say a student is training and training really, really hard. Uh, do you have any, can I say, let's say benefits or kind of like say, giveaway prizes? Uh, so do you have any in, in some motivation in terms of that? Yeah, we're, we're, we're doing some uh, certificates every few months now, we're gonna, which we're, we're not started yet, but we're just planning that. So once you've achieved a certain uh, technique, you're going to get a certificate. Once you've achieved something else, you're going to get a certificate. If you, you know, just showing your fitness level, you're going to get a certificate. And then uh, as you get better, um, once once we have comp- uh, shows, uh, we take you in the shows and we have um, an exhibition. So you do, so you get a feel of what it's like to do something in the crowd. So you might do some pads, you might do some train uh, circuit, which you do just before the actual fights, and that gives you a little trophy as well. So um, and then. The, there's always a best boxer on the night as well, which somebody gets. Um, so there's a few little um, things that you can get. So, so it's like your scouts, you know, where you get like a small little badge for every small yeah, thing yeah. you do. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what a lot of people do nowadays. So I thought, you know, we're going to start something similar to that in boxing. Usually it's a bit more uh, tougher and we don't do a lot of them kind of things. But I think a lot of people expect that nowadays and uh, um, we started something as ourselves. Yeah, and of course, as we're reaching the final two minutes of today's interview, is there anything you want to say in terms of any inspirational message, any motivational quote that you want to give to our audience who want to, let's inshallah, aspire to become uh, boxers and hopefully become boxing champions? Yeah, I think um, not just boxing. I think um, anything that people, anybody wants to do, um, I think they should go for it. A lot of our, a lot of our Asian parents and uh, and families want their kids to just be ad- academic not everybody is academic and they can't always become doctors accountants and solicitors um let them you know i'd say get you get the support of your parents talk to them and uh, and get their blessings and uh, support and tell and tell them what you want to do you know and uh, you can mix it up do a bit of the study and but uh, and do something what you like as well because a lot of our people don't support the kids in what they want to do it's not always um something that's going to give them the opportunities in uh, to do something straight away, but in life, you know, later on in life, you can, you can uh, benefit them in some way. I never thought I would be able to um, carry on doing something in boxing that I could make into my job or my life, you know, into into my um, earnings and, and the rest of it. But um, I've, I've stayed, I've stayed involved for what thirty odd years, and, <laughs> and and it's took a bit of time, but I'm I'm benefiting from it now, passing on my experiences, uh, enjoying giving the youngsters. Um, a uh, change in their life and, uh, and 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 helping them in in lots of different ways and also using it as a job so you know um it, it, others can do the same so just keep doing working hard whatever whatever you want go for it but make sure you get your support from your families and uh, and the blessing from them Thank you very much, Brother Jawad Khalik, for coming into today's show. I really appreciate it. I've definitely learned a lot, lot of things about boxing and, of course, the debunks of the myths. And, of course, if you want any, any more information about uh, uh, Brother Jawad's <coughs> Boxing Academy, then you can go and search Brother uh, Jawad Khalik on Google. <laughs> You'll definitely come up <laughs> on all of a I've tried it before. And, of course, uh, inshallah, we shall continue with today's show uh, straight after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.